Aside from art and anatomy, Leonardo da Vinci also devoted in-depth studies to the operation of machines, devising all kinds of instruments that can perform complex tasks. At the age of 30, he surprised his peers by moving from Florence to Milan. Less of an artistic center and more of a political one, Milan presented different opportunities for his restless mind. Here, he began to work for Milan's ruler, Ludovico Sforza. Da Vinci's skill as an engineer and inventor came front and center as he designed numerous defensive structures and weapons of war. Here, he drew catapults, cannons, and crossbows. His designs were visionary, if not prophetic. He drew up plans for a covered chariot, taking inspiration from a tortoise shell. It carried cannons in a circular platform with wheels that allowed movement in any direction. It will take 400 years before the concept became reality in the modern tanks used in World War I. For many of us today, flying is so commonplace that we forget it was once a threshold. For Leonardo da Vinci, it was his one great obsession. He dedicated many years to solving the mystery of flight. He was crazy about flying. He thought about mechanical wings, wings that were flapping, aerial screw that goes up, sphere. It's a flying sphere. Spent a lot of time studying the bird's movement and everything until he tried working on an item that will let somebody fly. He was so certain that man is destined to conquer the skies. He said in his writings, there shall be wings. If the accomplishment is not for me, then it will be for another. Though he never realized his dream of flight, his works are recognized as the common heritage of flying machines centuries after his death. In fact, a Russian boy named Igor Sikorsky studied Leonardo's sketches and went on to make the first successful helicopter in history by 1940. And my flying today all started from here.